When I bought the Holy Trinity of lenses, I went with the f4 because of, well, one cost and two image stabilization. As someone who does video, the image stabilization comes, it really comes in handy. I also love the 35mm focal length. So I want to compare my old EF f4 lenses with the new RF f2.8 lenses. Now, I did take these photos in studio, so it's not a true representation of in the real world, but I have a lot of real world experience with all of these lenses, so I can, can, I can confirm and or deny what we find in the studio here, so uh, let's get into it. Um, so these are both profile corrected. The ones with stars are profile corrected. The ones without stars are not. Um, yeah, let's take a look. First, we're going to zoom in onto these Canon logos here, because that is where I did focus. Now it's a little more close to the edge of the frame, so we're not going to expect like tack sharp, but uh, it does look like the 15 to 35 f2.8 is a little sharper here. Um, definitely a little sharper. Now again, these are profile corrected. Let's check the chromatic aberration. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of both, but almost the almost looks like the 15 to 35 might have a little bit more. Yeah, no. Looks like, uh, you know, looks like the 1535 might have slightly more chromatic aberration. But it also looks like the 15 to 35 has more accurate colors. Like the, the whites are whiter. Um, the, the white balance on these photos are the same. The settings are the exact same. I shoot full manual. Uh, just use autofocus to focus and pull focus. Um, that's because the R5, uh, it pulls focus faster than I can. So that's why. And it's more accurate. Uh, maybe something I should learn. But. Yeah, no, uh, I, I think the 15 to 35 col colors are more ac accurate, they're more popping. Like, this red looks a little dull to me compared to this red. Um, but, yeah, there, there is, a, it seems like a little more, a little bit more chromatic aberration. You can always, you know, try to adjust for that or edit it out, but let's take a look at the, let's take a look at the uncorrected. So, uncorrected, uncorrected, let's go back to that chromatic aberration. How, how is this so much brighter? How... Yeah, how is that so much brighter? It's not profile corrected, okay. Okay, so the 15 to 35 somehow is brighter at f4. Maybe that accounts for the chromatic aberration. So the RF 15 to 35 f2 point lens lets in more light at f4 than the EF um, does at f4. Um, that's that's actually kind of kind of crazy kind of cool uh, maybe that explains why the colors are more popping um, let's uh, let's try something here let's just pop this up try to match match that a bit let's go back in no no I, I still like I still like this color better um, maybe we can match it yeah okay yeah, okay, maybe maybe it's just an exposure thing. Maybe it's just uh maybe it's just the fact that the RF glass lets in it seems more light even at the same aperture. Um it's cool. It's cool. That's uh cool. Um Yeah, interesting, very interesting. Um uh, let's 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 uh let's move on here. Um chromatic aberration, let's just check a little bit more of that. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, it looks like the F4 glass might be might have a slight edge on that chromatic aberration. Um, now the RF glass is much sharper, so that's something to note. Uh, especially if you're using a high megapixel camera, the RF glass is much sharper. It's much more accurate. Um, but there does seem to be a little tiny bit more uh, more fringing. Um, uh, when you start getting into the, those higher apertures, uh, the, that chromatic aberration, it goes away. In the real world, I've seen it go away. Um, usually F7 is a really nice spot for that 16 to 35, and the uh, 15 to 35, F7, F8 area is, uh, is really, really nice spot for uh, the 15 to 35, so. Yeah, uh, they are comparable. They, when it comes to f4, uh, they're definitely comparable. They, one has, uh, it seems like a softer look. Uh, one is more sharp, but the sharper one does have a little bit more fringing, and the uh, the softer one 
um, it, it looks well. It has less of that. Uh, so I mean, pick your pick your. It, it's up to you. It's preference, really. Um, both look great. Both are really sharp, and I wouldn't complain about either. Uh, F two point eight though, really nice to have. Again, wide angle. Um, really nice to have because it gets you more background uh, separation. Um, with telephoto, you get really good background separation um, just because uh, your background is further away from your subject and you're further away from your subject. But when it comes to uh, wide angle, having f2.8 is going to be a, a game changer when it comes to video. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of those two. Let's go on to the 24 to 70s. So these are profile corrected. Uh, same settings across the board on both. Um, let's zoom in. So our active one is the F4, the uh, non-active is the RF. And immediately, uh, we're noticing much less chromatic aberration uh, on the RF, and the color's more accurate, and it's sharper. It's all around better in every way. The contrast is better. This RF F2.8 lens, it is becoming my favorite lens. Um, and I used to love the 15 to 35 or um, 16 to 35 focal length. I like that wide angle uh, a lot. But this RF 50, uh, 24 to 70, its image quality is so good that I just I, I'm always reaching for it. I'm always wanting to shoot with it. Um, like I'm, I'm going to start using it for video more. Going to start using it for photo more. It's probably going to be my go-to lens because. It is really good. I, I mean, the EF is still good. The EF, um, it is still really good. Now, keep in mind the F4 lens, the EF is wide open, but the uh, the, the 2.8, it, it does have an advantage here because um, it can go it can go all the way down to 2.8, and um, and the F4 is sharper. So all around, the RF lens, man, uh, the, the 24 to 70 is is incredible. Let's take a look at the non-profile corrected. Right off the bat, I'm noticing a little bit more vignetting on the uh, the EF. A little bit more vignetting. Interesting, because uh, one of the yeah, like one of the criticisms of the RF lenses uh, is vignetting, but the EF F4 version, image stabilized. This this lens right here actually, <laughs> um, it seems to have a stronger vignette. So let's, let's zoom in, check out that sharpness. The RF is noticeably sharper here. Like this is much sharper of an image. Uh, contrast is better. We are seeing some chromatic aberration that must be taken out with profile correction, but we're seeing more of it with the F4 lens, the EF. So uh, all around the, in every way, it seems that the RF lens is better than the EF lens. I'm not seeing a way that it's not. Um, colors are better, contrast is better, sharpness is better, uh, chromatic aberration is better. Um, that wasn't the case with the 15 to 35. The 15 to 35, uh, we did notice. Uh, da, 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 15 to 35, we did notice that the chromatic aberration was almost slightly worse um, on the 15 to 35 over the EF 16 to 35 F4. You can kind of see it here, you can kind of see it here, um, but again, if you go to f5.6, you go to f7.1, f8, it mostly, if not all, goes away, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and it does look like the RF glass lets in more light, so if we were to, um, if we were to take down this light a little, yeah, no, um, the RF 15-35 is sharper but has more chromatic aberration. The RF 24 to 70, however, is sharper with less chromatic aberration, less discoloration. Um, so, with the 15 to 35, uh, if you want an image stabilized zoom and you want budget, 16 to 35 EF is still an excellent choice, and the edges look a little nicer. Um, the 15 to 35. Um, it is it's the choice I went with I, I do like the extra millimeter it does come in handy uh, I like f2.8 a lot that's what I'm filming this on right now actually this is the 1535 and I'm filming at f2.8 
what that lets me do is it lets me go to 60 frames per second. I personally like the look of 60 frames per second. Um, it's just it's just more pleasing to me than, than 24. Um, people might come at me for that, but whatever. Um, so it, it lets me do that and still keep a ISO of only 200. And it's only at 200 because I use highlight corrections. So if it wasn't for that, I could probably go to 100 and it would still be fine. So I love this lens for that reason specifically. It's image stabilized for video and it's f2.8. So you get better low light performance and you get this nice creamy background here. Like it's it's there, but it's, it's not. Um, it's less distracting. With the f4, you can still get some background blur, but at wide angle, it becomes very hard to do. Yeah, it comes down to what is your purpose with the lens. Do you want that foreground background? Do you want that you know blurry foreground? in focus blurry background uh, f2.8 really nice to have and the image stabilization on this lens is amazing um, but if you don't care about that as much and with f4 you can still get some just not as much uh, and low light performance you might need to crank, crank your iso up a little bit more with the f4 lens um, you get less chromatic aberration though which is a huge plus uh, but yeah it just as a video creator, the, the 15 to 35 makes more sense to me. I, I do like sharpness. Uh, I can correct for the chromatic aberration and it mostly, if not all, goes away. Um, whereas you can't correct for a you know a more a better f-stop. You can't you can't do that really. <laughs> I mean you can with some softwares, but it doesn't doesn't look right to me. I like I like getting things right in camera, so this RF 24 to 70 is probably the best lens I've ever used, period. It, this is probably the best lens I've ever used. The sharpness is amazing. I've never used a lens this, this sharp, honestly. Even at wide open, even at f2.8, this lens is sharp. The chromatic aberration is not there, uh, whereas the f4 had a lot more of it, um, which is kind of interesting how it kind of flip flops there. And the color contrasts, Everything about the RF 24-70 uh, f2.8 lens is, uh, I don't want to say it's perfect, but, uh, but, um, it's, it's getting there, it's getting there, <laughs> it's becoming my favorite lens, it's definitely becoming my favorite lens, um, I love wide angle, I love the 15-35, to but, you can't beat this. This is. This... <laughs> I'm just astonished at how good this lens is. Um, so let, let's just quickly compare. Um, here's the 16 to 35 versus the uh, RF, because the 16 to 35 had less chromatic aberration, right? So let's let's check that 16 to 35 versus the RF 24 to 70. Um, RF 24 to 70. Oh, we have profile correction on. Let's get profile correction off. Um, and yeah, make sure you have the right ones. <clears throat> so maybe it has something to do with the positioning of the lens. Maybe it has something to do with the uh, the size of it, or I don't know. It is significantly it's significantly softer. Um, the RF lens is way way sharper but it seems to the this the ef 16 to 35 f4 lens seems to have not a lot of chromatic aberration so i think you kind of have to choose what um like what's important to you um when it when it comes to that uh, do, do you want less chromatic aberration uh, something that can be achieved with the rf lens by just you know going to f 5.6 instead or do you want the ability to go to f2.8 so that you can get that foreground background? Um, and and yeah, the RF, it, it's interesting to me that this EF 1635 is so much softer than all of the other lenses, but um, the chromatic aberration is just so under control. The colors are under control, everything. Is very in control with this lens um, I almost wish I didn't sell it now because it's almost a good tool to have in your toolbox um, it's something I might buy back one day honestly 
<laughs> can't always, you know, sell it for the same price as you can in a current day's market, so that's uh, that's why I sold it, but uh, I almost have seller's remorse because uh, it, it serves a different purpose than the 15 to 35 uh, does. 1535 is sharper. Um, it's better uh, in, in a lot of ways. It goes to f2.8. But if you're ever in a situation that's super high contrast and you don't want chromatic aberration, this 16 or 35 f4 lens might might be the choice. It might be the choice. So. That's kind of the conclusion with uh, with that 16 to 35. Um, if your your main concern is chromatic aberration, check that lens out because uh, I I had three photos of every lens with every lens, and the 16 to 35 chromatic aberration is uh, or was um, significantly better in every single one of those photos. So um, yeah, chromatic aberration. If that's your main concern, check out the 16 to 35 f4 ef lens. Um, it's really good if sharpness and color accuracy um, and f2.8 is more your concern um, 15 to 35 I love it so much. I love it so much f2.8 is amazing I can I can correct for that color um, chromatic aberration when it's wide open and When I don't want it. I just go to f5.6 and it's it's gone. So um, I Personally like the 15 to 35. That's my choice. I like 2.8 um, if you choose the EF 16-35 f4 lens though, I don't think you will be disappointed. I love that lens as well. I almost wish I didn't sell it. It's a really good lens to have. Um, landscape photography, amazing lens. Uh, sharpness just isn't quite there um, unless you're right in the center of the frame in wide open. But other than that, the EF 16-35 lens highly recommend uh, the 1535 that's what I personally use I can highly recommend that the RF 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens that is probably my most recommended lens of all time I would say that that is the best lens Canon probably has ever made at this point um, I haven't tested it against the 28 to 70 but I know that one suffers from a bit of focus breathing or much more focus breathing um, whereas the 24 to 70 f 2.8 no, little to no focus breathing um, so as a video creator as a photographer as an all-around um, someone who does photo video all sorts of situations that 24 to 70 RF glass if you are on a mirrorless system I would say that's almost almost a must-have as a professional um, it's it's really good um, the EF uh, yeah EF, the EF 24 to 70 F4 lens, um, just it's nowhere near as good. It's still really good. Um, don't get me wrong. I would say that it is. Uh, it's nice and sharp. Uh, you got a little bit of softness compared, but the chromatic aberration is more prevalent, and the vignette seems to be much more prevalent with that EF F4 lens. Uh, this one here. Um, yeah, yeah. I have tried the 24 to 105 f4 RF lens. The RF 24 to 105 f4 lens, I would highly recommend that over the EF 24 to 70 f4. I don't know why I gave up my 24 to 105. Um, I traded it for the 70 to 200 f4. Just did a straight trade because I wanted that telescopic more, and I'm glad I did. I, I use that telescopic a lot. Uh, and then I picked up this 24 to 70 for like. 400 bucks or something like 500 bucks. I got it for a crazy deal and uh, It did the job it definitely did the job as a 24 to 70 image stabilized lens um, But I would not recommend it if you have the option to go RF and get the 24 to 105 f4 lens that would be my more That would be more my recommendation if you want an f4 is lens and want to save some money in that focal range but if you can afford it, the f2.8 RF 24-70 is the best lens I have ever used on the RF platform, EF platform, you name it. It has been the best, most versatile lens, and it's just it's just sharp. No matter what I do with it, no matter what I do with that lens, it looks good. So that would be my recommendation if you want the best 
35 millimeter focal range zoom lens for the Canon RF mount, you get that 24 to 70 f 2.8. That's my conclusion here. That, that's what I was comparing all these for. I was comparing all of them so that I could see which one is the best 35 millimeter and I got my answer, so. The EF-1635 F4, I might buy that back one day, actually. Um, I, I kind of like the softness of it. Um, I like the lack of chromatic aberration. Um, it, it, it has a purpose. It, it serves a different purpose than the 15 to 35 uh, F2.8. Uh, but if I have to choose one or the other, which I do have to choose one or the other because of budget, the 15 to 35 RF F2.8 lens is, is going to be my go-to for that because I love I love the shallow depth of field. I love that. And um, it's image stabilized and it's sharper. So that's that's my choice. So so my conclusion would be if you want the sharpest, best 35 millimeter zoom, you get the 24 to 70 f2.8 RF lens. If you want less chromatic aberration, um, the 16 to 35 f4 lens is really good. But if you want that low light performance, if you want that background separation, go with the 15 to 35 RF. Now, if you're on a budget and you want like a 24 to 70 range F4 lens, I would suggest the RF, specifically RF, not the EF, the RF 24 to 105 F4 zoom lens. That thing is really sharp, really good. I loved it. I don't know why I got rid of it again, but uh, that would be my recommendation. Go with that, not the EF 24 to 70 F4 if you're on a budget. Um, it's a little bit more, definitely a little bit more, but definitely worth the extra money to go with that RF 24 to 105. I don't know if this was helpful. I'm very ADHD brain and all over the place when it comes to this stuff, but if you found this 35 millimeter comparison across four lenses helpful, I mean, awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad. Um, otherwise, I found it helpful. I'm gonna be reaching for that 24 to 70 more often. It just kind of confirms my instinct when it came to working with these lenses and why I keep reaching for it um, to present day. So I learned a lot from this myself and uh, yeah, if you didn't, I'm sorry. I'm glad you stayed. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. That, that's cool of you and uh, hope you have a good day. Peace.